So your company has decided to explore mass producing spare parts throughout the organization. You might have a whole catalog of parts and pieces that might be used in a warehouse or might be used on some of your products that have started to become defunct. But you wanna maintain a supply chain for all those parts and pieces. 3D printing is obviously a good solution for something like this because you don't have to recreate the tools, you don't have to store the tools, and you're able to support your entire catalog of parts and pieces and have it produced at the scale that you might need regardless of the size of your operation. It might be one part, it might be 100,000. But how do you actually go about converting old parts and pieces and an old catalog of designs into 3D printable items that can be put into the supply chain to where your staff throughout the organization can just say, order now, and the part can be delivered in a reasonable amount of time. In this video, we're gonna go through how we set that up here at Slant3D. So spare parts catalogs are often quite tricky to deal with because they are designed with legacy uh, manufacturing in mind. They are designed for injection molding or CNC machining or some other type of process, which aren't really viable anymore because the molds may have worn out and that's why you don't have uh, spare parts anymore. Or you don't want to retool up or you don't want to redo the designs for the new versions of the machines that exist. So 3D printing is an option there, but since 3D printing is again another different process, there have to be some considerations made for the fact that you don't really want to just 3D print an injection molded design. You'll very often be disappointed if you go that direction because something will be different because the specifications of the process are different. So the first thing to do is really just have a conversation with the manufacturer. Here at Slant3D, what we prefer is that if you have existing CAD models of the parts that you want to have converted into digital warehoused inventory, basically, where it's just printed when you need them so that you have a supply chain of the parts that's on demand, but you don't have to store stuff on the shelf. In that case, send us over the models and one of our engineers would go through and evaluate them. And then we can quote those models and send them back to you. That is the kind of more laborious way of doing it because it's only the parts that you know that you need right now. And it's much easier to basically kill a bunch of these birds all with one stone. Because if you have a bunch of these parts lined out already, there will probably be a bunch more. There might be potentially thousands more pieces that could be converted to 3D printable so that your organization can get access to them whenever they need. You could basically just download the entire out of stock list. And now you certainly don't wanna to have to pay to have those reconverted there. But very often here at Slant3D, if a company has a large quantity of necessary pieces that they know could eventually be needed but just aren't in existence anymore, we will very often just partner with you directly. And within that partnership, you can send us the list of those parts and our team would go through and evaluate them and pick out the ones of like, we can make those, we can make those, we can make those. And if there are ones with exceptionally high demand, we can say, we'll recreate the model, make sure it's uh, 3D printable for you and just make it available for you. But order the parts through us when you need those parts. That's kind of the simpler way for you as an organization to do it because you don't really have to think about it at all. Uh, the first option is you select the files, you select the models, you select the parts that you think you need. Um, and then we evaluate them and quote them as if you had just sent us a new design for a new product. But with the latter option where you just send us the list of pieces that are no longer available that you'd like to have available, we can go through and basically take responsibility for taking over the design of them, taking over the processing and performance checking of them all and basically just become an engineering contractor for you to where you say, we have these parts, if you can make these parts, we'll buy them from you. And we'll say, okay, we'll take the investment to make the parts. So in that latter half, much more of the responsibility is on us to create uh, the deliverable. Whereas in the first where you're sending us parts and saying, how much does it cost to make these parts? Then all the responsibility is on you. We say, well, it'll cost this much. These will be the specs of the pieces. If you wanna modify the design, it'll make them a little bit better here, but we only print what you give us. Whereas with the latter option, you, you say, here is our need, and we say, here is the solution that we have for you. As opposed to, here's our need and our solution, can you actually provide the solution that we're asking for? Um, that's much more restrictive, whereas if we just have the list of the parts that you need, we can go through and actually help you much more and use our expertise and our scale and our insights to say, you know, those parts right there we can actually make and actually those other parts that you also have, we can also make for you if we just did this, that, and the other thing, which you may not have considered. If you're just requesting a quote from us to have a small batch of parts made, uh, then it's 
much less of a partnership and it's just a client uh, business relationship. And that's less personal and less helpful because we don't have as much information as we could have. But if you say, here is the full list of parts and pieces that we need, just go at it and say, Slant 3D, can you help us with any of these things? We got washers, brackets, and boxes that need to be made. Which ones can you make? And we'll just say, we can make that one, that one, that one, that one, and we'll work on these and send you some samples. So that's very often the better direction to go. Ultimately, once those parts are made, we can either produce them in large batches for you once the designs of them are done, or we can just set up a digital warehousing connection with you to where your team would have access to an exclusive app to where they can have access to your company's catalog of 3D printable pieces. And when they can sign in, purchase one of those parts, and we would print and ship them on demand to them and your company would be billed on a, a monthly basis for those spare parts. So it's really quite easy to reactivate options from the past products and designs. If you have products that have been around for years and you just want spare parts available for customers, your own customers, rather than internal use, you can now basically create a portal where those customers can order those pieces and get what they need when they need them. And you can reactivate the value of all of that past intellectual property, all of those designs, all those brackets, and allow people to modify or maintain existing machinery in a way that you were never capable of before. Because before, you had to have an injection molding run where you made 10,000 of them. And then you had to decide if it was worth storing those on the shelf for the next 10 years. Whereas with 3D printing, you can just say, here is the parts that are available that can be printed. When somebody buys it, it is printed and shipped directly to them. And you receive the revenue from that part and you're able to keep that part in stock basically forever. And you're able to have infinite number of SKUs without actually having to store inventory. So spare parts are a really good option for companies that are wanting to revamp their existing supply chain to support a potentially declining products that still have a customer base or an internal use case, but maintaining the spare parts inventory is just too costly. 3D printing basically eliminates that pain. And if you're able to partner with us directly, we're able to take responsibility and just say, you have a bunch of this list of parts that you need, we'll recreate as many of them as we can, as fast as we can, based on your level of need of each one, and you can just go. That way your organization doesn't have to learn 3D printing, doesn't have to understand 3D printing and get really deep in the weeds of it. You can instead just say, we need these parts, can you make these parts? And we'll say, here are our equivalent parts. So hopefully that gives you some insight about how to set up a corporate partnership for spare parts for your organization. Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing it where we can just job shop individual pieces or we can actually directly partner with you and really scalably just replace a catalog that may have lost all of its inventory and isn't going to be reactivated any other way. Have a great day, everybody.